The Java Collections API contains classes and interfaces that make it easier for you to work with collections of objects in Java. In this diagram, I have listed the core interfaces of the Java Collections API. Um, in other words, the most commonly used interfaces of the Java Collections API. By the way, this video is part of a playlist of videos about the Java Collections API. And the later videos in this playlist will have a lot more detail about each of these interfaces. So in this video, I will only concentrate on giving you an overview of the interfaces. And that is also why in this video, I do not give you any code examples because the later videos in the playlist will um, give you that. If you check out the description below this video, you will find a link to the um, playlist and uh, to a textual version of this tutorial. The first interface I want to talk about is the Java iterable interface. And the iterable interface represents a collection of objects which can be iterated, typically by obtaining an iterator from the iterable and then uh, iterating through the, um, the objects, the elements. Uh, but there are other ways than that, but that's like the core idea. And you can use the Java for each loop with an, with an iterable as well. So. Um, as you can see, I've made this interface uh, white because it is not actually part of the Java Collections API, but uh, the Java Collection interface in the Java Collections API extends the iterable interface so that all collections um, in the Java Collections API are iterable. And the second interface here is the collection interface, and that represents some uh, kind of abstract collection of, of objects, of elements, and it con this interface contains methods like add and size, uh, so you can see how many elements are in the collection, etc. Um, there are a couple of interfaces that are sub-interfaces, meaning the, they extend the collection interface. And the first one is a list, and the list interface represents an ordered list of elements. And the same element can be uh, present more than once in the list and you can also iterate the uh, objects in the order in which they are added to the list, in which they are stored internally in the list. Uh, the set interface, um, on the other hand, is a, represents a unique collection of elements, which means that each element can only be present in the set once. And additionally, the as set does not guarantee the order of the elements uh, stored internally. And so if you iterate them, you don't know what the order is going to be of the iteration. And for that purpose, instead, we have the sorted set, which provides some sort of uh, sorting of the elements internally. And um, once they are sorted internally, you can also iterate them in that order. And finally, we have the navigable set, which means that um, which provides methods for navigating the elements of a sorted set. Um, in the order they are sorted internally. So navigable set extends sorted set and sorted set extends set. So a sorted set is a set and a navigable set is a sorted set and also a set. Uh, similarly, we have a queue here, a queue interface, and that also extends the collection interface. And a queue is a data structure that enables you to enqueue objects um, at the end of the queue and take them out from the queue in the beginning of the queue, just like a queue in a supermarket where people enqueue themselves at the end of the queue and they are served from the beginning of the queue. And then we have the DEC interface. And the DEC interface is an abbreviation, or the, the name a DEC is an abbreviation of, for double-ended queue. And a double-ended queue simply means that you can enqueue and dequeue from both ends of the, of the DEC. And that means that you can use a deck as both a queue um, and a stack as well. Then we have the, the map interface. And the map interface uh, itself does not um, extend the collection um, interface here uh, because it's slightly different. It represents um, a mapping of keys to values. So for instance, you can map a customer number or a social security number or an email address to a person or a customer etc and then later when you come back with the customer number or the email address or this social security number you can look up what a person or customer corresponds to that key 
Um, the map interface does not by itself guarantee any ordering of the elements uh, stored internally in the map or the key value pairs. Um, that's why we have the sorted map interface, which does provide um, a method for sorting the elements internally, actually sorting the keys internally. And we also have a navigable map, which enables you to navigate the, the, um, the keys stored in the map according to the sort order in which they are sorted in the sorted map, right? So a sorted map extends the map interface and the navigable map extends the sorted map interface. So a navigable map is also a sorted map, which is also a normal map. Finally, we have the iterator interface and the list iterator interface. And an iterator enables you to iterate the elements of a collection um, in forward direction. And exactly in which order the uh, elements are iterated depends on the collection. Uh, that you obtain the iterator from. So if it is a list, you will iterate the elements in the order in which they are stored internally. And uh, if it is a set, then the, the order is determined by the set implementation. And um, if it is a sorted set, yeah, then the order is again determined by the given sorted set implementation and you can affect this sort order yourself. And the same is true uh, of a queue. Um, the, with a queue, you will iterate the elements in the order they are stored internally in the queue. And the same is true for a deck. And in a map, it depends on the map implementation. And with a sorted map, you can iterate the elements according to their sorted order, or the keys at least. Um, like I said, the iterator interface only enables you to iterate the elements in forward direction and that is why we have the list iterator interface so from a list you can obtain a list iterator and then you can iterate the elements in both forward and backwards direction that's all i have to say about the java collections api or at least the core interfaces of the java collections api um, check out the description below the video to find a link to the playlist where you can get more information about each of these interfaces as well as code examples, and you can also find a link to a textual version of this tutorial.